My name is Tim, aka Nerd Disco. And before we start, I want to be sure that we are on the same page. Since 2012, I have used code CSS, JavaScript, Canvas2D, 3GS, and GLSL to create art. I learned all of this by personal trial and error, by reading tutorials, by watching videos, and by talking to other people. But with AI, things are about to change, and I'm here to explore this with you. The goal for this video is to use ChatGPT to create a generative artwork, a field of growing flowers. I stick with JavaScript as I have the most experience there. And the field will grow on Canvas 2D. After I'm done, I hope that I will have answers to the following questions. How to use ChatGPT to get from a rough idea to a working prototype? Can you actually use ChatGPT without any coding experience? Will ChatGPT replace humankind? Or is it just a nice assistant, especially for generative artists? If this actually works out, I want to use the generated code as the foundation for a NFT on FXHash, which is a marketplace for generative art on the Tezos blockchain. Transforming the code into a generative token for FXHash involves a lot of fine-tuning and in-depth coding and will be not part of this video. I will just use my brain and convert the code in my own time. But if you are interested in my process on converting code into something that can be minted on FXHash, then please leave a comment below. There is an event in January for generative artists called January. Each day you get a different prompt and then you can create art based on that. When January actually happened, I had no idea what I could build, but then I decided to pick the plants prompt because I got an inspiration from my friend 2XAA. We released a new album called Eleskere, which is Latin for to grow. On the cover you see a plant that is growing and I would love to create something in this direction. So. I will start with telling ChatGPT what this is about and what I want to use. For January, I want to create a generative plant using JavaScript on Canvas 2D. And I would love you to help me with that. My idea is to create a flower. Can you please provide me with some starter code? So this code will create a yellow circle in the center of canvas and five red petals around it. You can use the fill step property to change the color of the center and the petals. The translate, rotate and scale methods are used to position shape each petal. Feel free to experiment with different values to create different variations of the flower. Okay, well then let's take this stuff here. I guess canvas first, which goes into part uh, this one here it's renaming this to something that i'm usually doing here just taking this over and putting it into the javascript we'll not use var here const okay this is still wrong okay so this is generating the plant Nice. So next I would love to have also a stem that will also tell it to don't use var and const so I don't have to update this all the time. Can you please call the canvas and the output instead of my canvas and don't use var but const or let. Just to clean up the code and we don't actually need to change the things that I just changed as you saw it. So it will just always be correctly in the format that I want. And I'm calling this ND output because really the canvas that I'm creating for my generative stuff is called ND for Nerd Disco. And it's just the output. And yeah, this is just my preference here. You can of course name this however you want. But I would love to have this consistency so that I know it's always the same thing. I can just use it. Okay, so this is now the same stuff as before. And next, I want to generate a stem. Please add a green stem to the plant. Okay, I will also just tell it to get rid of this boilerplate code so that we don't have to create this all the time. Can you please get rid of the boilerplate code at the beginning and the end? Because I'm only interested 
in the code that is actually generating the plant. So get rid of and Okay, just letting you know so that we don't see that all the time and just get the other code. But as we already have this code, I will add the draw a green stem on and add this. And because we are adding it afterwards, it's actually on top of the plant. And this is something that we don't want. So we're telling it. The stem is in front of the flower. Please put it behind it. Okay, and it knows that it should be drawn firstly in the code. And I guess this will now make it correct. Yeah, exactly. So it draws the stem in front, and this is what we just do here. We draw first the stem, and then the flower, and then we have this, which looks already pretty nice. I would love to have an animation where first the stem is coming out of the ground, like it's growing, and when it reaches the full height, I want that the flower is drawn petal by petal so yeah it's suggesting to use recast animation frame which is like a function in javascript where you can render something in the browser on a constant frame rate and if your system is not fast enough it will yeah, still draw it under accessible frame so that you should have smooth animations and let's see how this will actually look like now so what i would love to have is something where it's growing 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 and some kind of speed and i can tell what the speed is and then change this later on and define how fast the plant is growing in this example the draw function is called repeatedly using the request animation frame method and the state of the stem and the flower is updated on each frame the stem height is increased by 5 pixels on each frame until it reaches 200 pixels and then the angle of the petals increases by 0.1 radians on each frame until all the petals have been drawn that sounds promising. I have the draw function, getting rid of the canvas first, so like nothing is on the canvas anymore for, for because of an each frame. We would actually draw on top of the previous frame, but this makes sure that we are clearing canvas by drawing the stem with an initial height. Okay, so the center is already there. And I'm drawing the petals. How I would understand it right now is that it actually already has a height of 250. Because I mean, this was before. I don't know, we are moving it. Okay, I see, I see. No, no, no. So let's put it here. Yeah, and you saw it, it's already... I think it was there, but it was very fast. I would just be triggered. Yeah, yeah, so you see it's drawing the stem right from the top to the bottom. It's not starting at the bottom. And the center is already here. And then the petals are created. So let's fix that. The stem is growing from the top to the bottom. But I would love to see it the other way around. Yeah, it's updating starting position. Absolutely. So I guess now, yeah, so it's initially saying the stem height is 200. And I guess it's then decreasing it. Yeah, it's decreasing it. In this example, the starting position of the stem has been updated to 250, 250 per stem height, which means that it starts at the bottom of the canvas. The stem height increases by 5 pixels on each frame. Okay, this is what we had before. Yeah, I mean, I get it, but I mean, the code then also does not make any sense because the height in the beginning is 200 and then I'm decreasing it, which means then the height is zero, so, but it's still not zero. This is confusing for me as the stem height is 200 in the beginning and in the end it's zero, but the stem is full height. Can you please fix that so that the stem height actually represents the final height of the stem okay introduce two new variables stem final height stem current height so we actually have an influence on the height of the stem which is awesome for later on when we want to make this various variations of this so we already have like a first parameter for making the flowers look different pretty nice you now it's increasing again the height this is also nice okay let's get rid of this yeah i mean stem exists <laughs> and then it gets removed so i guess this code is still not doing what i want okay when i execute the code the stem is drawn in full height and is then getting smaller from the bottom until it's not visible anymore can you please fix that my apologies for the confusion. Let me make the necessary changes for you. Here's the corrected code. We still have our variables 200 uh, final height and the current height. And let's see what it's doing now. So I still think it's wrong. It will be nothing. And then it will be drawn from... from... No, no, it's, it's, it will draw to the top. Yes, of course. No, no. Yeah, exactly. 
it's also explaining this to me. So it's saying that in this updated code, the stem is drawn from the top to the bottom with CTX move to 250-250 as the starting point. Yeah, we are 250-250. And then, and STX line 2, 250-250 minus stem current height as the ending point. So that the stem is growing from the ground up. Exactly. So I think, like, if it's now working, then I understand it. And if not, then I think it's wrong. <laughs> but let's see. Yeah, exactly. So this is for the... I was expecting that it's growing actually from the starting point over to the plants. Okay, so the executed code will now draw the stem from the bottom to the top, but the bottom is starting at the center of the flower. It should start at the actual ground. My apologies for the mistake. Okay, ChatGPT, I hope you can do it better now. Okay, so move two is now using the final head, which is still wrong, I think. Well, and then line two is using the final height, which is 200, which I think it's still above. I mean, if it's using the stem final height also to draw, no, it's not. So it's drawing the center of the flower still at 250. And the line is now drawn from 250 upwards to the stem final height, mine's current height. So I still think this is broken. The stem starts at the ground. I guess the definition of the ground is, is the problem here. I mean, why would it know what the ground is? Okay. So this is actually, actually what I want. I don't even understand this. So I'm moving this to 250 in the final head. Then I'm drawing the final head minus the current head. So it's 250. Uh, what? Can we define the ground at y equals zero? Because the 250 is confusing me and I would love to understand what is actually happening. Okay, so you can totally create this first and then what I'm doing here is making the background in black. The output... Should I actually see where the ground is when, when it's finally updated the code? It should start now at zero, which is here. Okay. We we'll just say, okay, it's on X 250, 250, but copy the code, include it here and see that the ground, oh, sorry, that the ground is at, man, it makes no sense. Yeah, of course it's wrong. I mean, I defined the ground as being at the top because I mean, it's starting at zero, but I want to start it at 500. Uh, what? The canvas size is defined as 500 by 500 pixels. The ground is at y500 and please make this configurable you can change the actual starting point of the plant later on by using the ground variable i think it makes the code more readable that we know okay what is actually this value in the ground this is where it's standing i'm wondering why is it now doing easier curves what did it do this before too no for whatever reasons the petals are now curves instead of just arcs I'm not sure where this is coming from now it's also it has like 12 leaves interesting and now it's using set interval why out of the sudden you are using berserk curve 2 for the flower and set interval for the animation because i mean never use set interval for animation please this will not give you constant frame rates it will not this is just like yeah in very rare scenarios where you need to hack something with the render loop you could actually do something like this but the actual render should always happen with recurse animation frame as this is like specifically there in the browser for generating stuff so please don't use set interval only if you need to and you know what you're doing but if you don't know what you're doing and you don't need to you should always use recurse animation frame I used Berserk Curve 2 to create curved petals for the flower. This method is part of the Canvas 2D API and it provides a way to draw smooth curves through control points. I chose to use this method because it allows for more intricate shapes to be drawn, which better resemble a flower than straight lines. Okay, but you used Arc before. Set interval is a JavaScript method that allows you to execute a function repeatedly over time. Yes, I know that. I just don't understand why suddenly you changed to set interval. But why? did you suddenly change it from request animation frame to set interval as i think using request animation frame makes way more sense i apologize for the confusion you are correct request animation frame would have been a more appropriate choice for this animation yes absolutely and what is it saying it allows you to queue a function to be executed before the browser's next repaint this is more efficient and smoother than set interval as it syncs 
the animation with the browser's refresh rate and helps to avoid overloading the browser's render engine. Absolutely. And this is why you should use Recus Animation Frame explained a bit better. And now I'm also confused because it also got rid of our other variables. For example, the stem final height. Let's give it like this to get to some kind of result. Oh yeah, cool. doing this again. Okay, I actually like the result. I enjoy it. Can you update the animation so that its speed can be adjusted by using a variable so that I can say that growing the plant takes two seconds? Because right now it's very fast and speed and I mean I'm also wondering like where the stem is now so thin. I really liked it before. It was just the line was okay. Yeah. So we can get this back. Nice. So now it's generating some functions, which is pretty awesome, of course. Then you can reuse them. And oh, I also some parameters here. This is awesome. So this looks even more like some generative code that can be reused to create more plants than just this one plant. Yeah, pretty nice. Okay. So I have draw stem, draw petal, draw flower, and grow plant. And then grow plant, I have a duration variable which is set to 2000 milliseconds as this is used here for generating the different steps. Okay, cool. And let's see. Before we take a look, let's get rid of the boilerplate code. Can you please get rid of this boilerplate code? As I already have this in my code sandbox. And now take a look at the previous result. Okay, now we run this again. So it's growing, 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 growing. And then it tries to generate the petals and is not working at all oh no <laughs> now it's also generating a completely different <laughs> function now it's it's just called anime and it also tells us the growth duration so it's <laughs> and it's the also thing is scss which is not it's javascript but i mean you cannot know everything yeah so the awesome functions are gone and we use this now and let's see <laughs> let's see what do we have now <laughs> okay so it's doing something. The ground is 500. So let's let's put the ground at 200. Let's see what, oh, what is it's doing then. Not doing anything. Okay. And if it's at 400. Yeah, yeah I think it's already completely drawn. It's just moving it to from the bottom to the top. Okay. It looks like the stem is already fully drawn and just moves from outside the canvas from the bottom to the top, but it should not be fully drawn yet, but actually grow from its original position, the ground. I apologize for that. Here's the corrected code for the growing stem animation. Okay, so we still have stem height, ground and growth duration as before. Stem growing start time is now it also creates the animate function. Calculate some progress based on the timestamp and start time. Yeah, then we Call the animate function if the progress is not actually the growth duration. Canvas drawing the stem, which gets simplified every time, and then it's drawing the flower. It looks like it, that the flower is already fully drawn. So this is, I guess, what we would see now. So let's move the ground under again. Okay, so this is actually fine. The stem animation is fine, but the flower itself is totally broken. Please fix that so that I have a center circle and five petals. They are only drawn after the stem is fully grown and then they are animated as they also grow. Getting very explicit again. Hopefully we can get back to the result we had before because this was really nice. Some variables are gone now. We have now ground Y 500 speed 20. The animation duration is completely gone. So I guess what we're doing here right now is a bit too confusing or complicated for ChatGPT as it tries to write like different code with each iteration that we're doing and it's not actually remembering the stuff that we did before. I mean, I will run this now for the sake of looking at how this will work out. Yeah. <laughs> the stem is now completely gone. And also the duration is not in the code anymore. Please fix that.
Okay, no, not even. <laughs> An apology at the beginning. Just starting with the code. So stem height, pedal count is zero. Okay, so I guess it's just using this internally. Stem duration is 2000 milliseconds again. Then we have stem growth and pedal growth. Then we have a function draw stem, which could draw the stem. Taking Y as an argument, I guess, which will be the ground. Draw pedals also with the Y and a draw plant function which will draw the stem and draw the petals at 500, which I guess because it has no ground anymore. Okay, so our ground is at 500. It's using this directly into, into the functions. And it actually looks like that it maybe, maybe remembered something. Okay, what am I doing wrong here? It's complaining about what? The max height is not defined. We just do this for the sake of completion. And the max height is 200. And I mean, it's not actually doing anything with those variables. Huh? Or no, why are they? See, level values never read. Huh? But why has this an influence? Oh, because it's defined here. Okay, yeah, so I'm wondering, uh, what is this? Nice, so... Okay. Please keep the code as you have it right now, using functions for the different parts of the plant. Please update the animation so that draw pedals is only executed after the stem is fully grown. So hopefully, <laughs> and I'm telling it, it should keep it. No, it's... <laughs> so uh, variables are gone again. It's now stem height, pedals drawn, and grow duration. We don't have the max height and that stuff anymore. And we also have to provide the context for whatever reason. I mean, it is globally defined, so I guess the pedals are also different again. Yeah, yeah, it's... <laughs> It's always something else. Okay, now we have the animal plant instead of grow plant. I draw plant. Oh, sorry. I guess we already have had all variations at some point. <laughs> animal plant and it, now it's using interval again. The context is global. We don't need to pass it into the functions and always use request animation frame. Okay, an error cured. Okay, then we just say regenerate, regenerate, regenerate. Regenerates, please regenerate, regenerate. Okay, we'll just copy this so I don't lose it. Put it over here. <laughs> but the plant is better. The plant is actually better than before. Where's the actual duration? Grow duration. It's just there. And if I'm doing it 100 here, then it will also be drawn. No, not. Anyway, I don't want to have the code anyway, so that'll look nice. Regenerate, regenerate, regenerate. Ground Y, stem height, pedal height, draw stem function as before too. And now we're getting colors back. Nice. So it defines a stroke style. And also it's lined with 10 again. Nice. Oh, awesome. Okay, so it's an actual improvement. Now we have functions without any parameters. So it will be interesting to see how this actually works. And an animate function timestamp. So it will just draw the flower without an animation. <laughs> it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Oh, I don't understand this. The max height should be, but it's still. Oh no, yeah, because it's already. It's. I think. I oh, know because animate is called over and over, and it will always increase. So yeah, yeah, I see. This code looks awesome. Please only change the part in the animate function where you increase the stem height, as this should only be executed while the stem height is below 200 so that it will not grow and grow and grow infinitely oh, please please keep that code <laughs> so now we only have the stem height and the ground y as the global variables and draw stem is using the stem height now as a parameter draw pedals is using the pedal radius i mean it's nice to have some some variables there oh it's so sad draw center is now not a function anymore so it will be i guess part of draw pedals yes yeah, I would do this differently, but this doesn't matter. I mean, I'm just telling the AI what it should do and take a look at the result. Okay, so yeah, okay. So the stem is growing and when the stem is in full height, it's actually drawing the petals. Okay, nice. This is almost as I want it. Can you also please animate the petals so that they are drawn? one by one after the stem is in full height starting with drawing the center and then each pedal how the code will 
be totally destroyed. Okay, now it's telling me it certainly is an updated version of the code with pebbles that animate one by one after the stem has reached its full height. We have a ton of global variables, stem height, stem duration, ground, pedal index, pedal duration, and pedal angle. And the stem duration is now <laughs> 2 multiplied by 1000 uh, instead of 2000. And it's very funny. It's always changing its own definitions. I mean, would I do the same? No, I mean, I would define these things. I would just leave it like this. But I mean, this is the problem if you have the knowledge of everything in your head. If I would totally rewrite my own things all the time, I actually would do things differently all the time because I might have learned something new or want to do it something in a different way because I know there are different ways to do stuff. So in this kind of perspective it makes sense, but not in the perspective of I'm talking with something and this something actually remembers the conversations that we had before this is the confusing part right now but i mean yeah nothing is perfect so we have the stem it yeah again has no colors <laughs> it's also very funny that it's just going away and for everything line again and yeah and animate is now we're setting variables on a function it's interesting if this is actually doing something <laughs> okay I'm, I'm super not sure what this is actually doing. Anyway, I don't want to understand this right now. The center of the flower is visible from the first frame, but it should be rendered when the stem height reaches the maximum. And now we have no, <laughs> no global variables anymore. We just have the animate function. Oh, okay. Uh, I think it's just an updating animate function and I should reuse the rest. Okay. Which is also pretty nice that it's finally not doing that. But now it wants the petal count, which doesn't exist. Okay. Let's create this. Okay, so why are the petals not drawn? Is drop petals actually is called then? Where is the petal count? I see it. So this is not the actual count, like the final count, but the but it's still not doing anything. So uh, what? It's draw system. If stem height is small to hundred, this increases the stem, and if not, then it increases the petal count. And if the stem height is bigger uh, or equal to hundred, it actually draws the petals with the petal count. And because this is an animate function, it should actually draw them. But even if it would draw them, they would still not be animated. The circle is fine, but there are no petals drawn. Let me fix that for you. Thank you very much. Starting with the animate function. Now there's also a center drawn variable. We have no idea where it's coming from. I haven't seen that it's here. So uh, the initial value of center drawn is false. And the draw circle function also doesn't exist. I will copy this and fix this myself because... Okay, no, 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 sorry. So I guess this makes actually no sense. Can you please provide the full code with all functions? As right now, this is not usable. Ah, okay, so we have the animate function first. Then we're defining the draw stem function, which has color and is now wrecked. <laughs> okay, I mean, also totally possible. Draw petals. Uh, it's now drawing the center and pink. Then it's drawing the petals. But I doubt that this is animated. Let's see. We have the stem and nothing else. And is this expected? Stem drawing false. Petal drawing true. Draw petals and petal drawing. This is actually needed nowhere. Draw petals is executed. But yeah, they are not visible. The petals are not drawn. Here's the full code of a stem growing animation and the petals being drawn one by one after the stem has reached its full height. Yes, this is what I want. Okay, I have now a lot of variables. Canvas, context and ground Y defined, but they have no value. Then stem height, stem width, pedal count, pedal width. Okay, this looks better. Pedal height, pedal center radius, uh, duration. Okay, awesome. If this is actually working, maybe this would be the nice baseline for the generative artwork that I want to create. Yeah, because like the idea is that yeah, I'm just creating the baseline here and will then use this to actually create a field of flowers. Now we also have an init function that does some initialization and it defines that ground Y is 500. Okay, now it's drawing the <laughs> stem over and over again. Awesome. Okay, stem drawing. Progress is bigger than one. I guess stem drawing will never be false. I'm not sure right now what is happening. You can fix this for me. The stem is drawn over and over and over. Here's the fixed code. Okay. Stem height, pedal drawn, duration, ground, stem step, pedal step, stem start, x, stem start, y, stem and x, stem and y, 
Petal Radius, Center Radius, Flower Start X and Flower Start Y. So this is the most amount of global variables that we have seen so far, which is always super promising to deliver a good result. Also a nice function, draw stem and draw center and draw petal. The stem is again without any color using move to and line to. The center is the arc. We had something that was actually working in parts of drawing the petal. I know it's just completely broken again. It draws the circle and I see the stem for a few milliseconds, but then it disappears. Here is the full code for you. Yeah, this is not what I was asking. I wanted to have something that is working. Variable changing again as always. Uh, stem the duration is now stem growth duration again. We also had them, but we also have now a petal growth duration, which we also had at some point. Uh, drum stem function, draw circle function, draw petal function, draw petal actually with x, y, and angle parameters. And the animate. So interesting, it's always different. The issue with the code before was that the stem was redrawn continuously even after it was fully grown, which is why it kept disappearing. In this updated code, the stem is drawn only once. It's fully grown and animation is controlled using Rick's animation frame. Petals are also animated in the same animate function and are drawn one by one until all five of them are drawn. Okay. The stem is not growing but has instantly the full height. The petals are drawn, but then disappear after a few milliseconds. Here's an updated version of the code that fixes the issue. Four variables at the top. I draw stem again with the context as a variable. It's clearly at some point not remembering what I told it. In this version of the code, the stem is drawn first. It's only after it's fully grown, the petals are drawn. If the petals are fully drawn, the center of the flower will be drawn. Okay, yeah, that sounds also reasonable. Looks actually pretty nice. I really like this. Petal counter equals 50. What is, is this actually mean? Draw petals. So radius is increased. So it's just creating. But how can I keep that? So I really like the flower where it's just a circle, so I will put this in a separate file so I can use this for later on. Can you please update draw petals to not only draw one circle, but multiple configurable petals? Oh, please, please keep everything else. I don't want that the other stuff is changing because it's pretty awesome that it's actually creating the center. That's pretty nice. So the center is totally correct. I mean, I still don't know how the animation can be controlled here. Anyway, here's an updated draw petals function that draws multiple petals, the number of which is determined by num petals argument. Okay, so I'm getting this one over here, and I guess it will. I mean, maybe it draws something. The center of the petals should be the center of the circle, as we have used it before. <laughs> that draws multiple petals in the circle with the special number of petals. Okay, but how does it know where the center of the circle is? You can adjust the number of petals by passing the desired number as an argument. Yeah, I understand this, but... I still don't know where the center is. Where does flower center come from? We didn't use that before. No, what was not used as the center position, you totally made this up, it was used as the center position of the circle as represents the center of the flower. It was created in the draw center function, passes an argument to draw petals in your dreams, maybe. In the previous code, you didn't use flower center. So please provide the full code so that I have a working example. And don't show me the boilerplate. Here's the full code to draw an animated plant that grows from the ground up. Yes, I mean, we still are on the same page. It's awesome. You can adjust the parameters to customize the look of the plant. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot of code, <laughs> which should be a good sign. 
Okay, Mrs. RV. No, I mean, ah, I don't want it. Not to show me the code uh, explicitly. Nice. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Yeah, I mean, I have a plan. But why are they changing position all the time? They're drawn instantly. Okay. So we draw the stem if the height is below 200. And if it's above 200, so after it's fully grown, we draw the center, which is nice. And then we draw petals. Uh, petal radius is smaller than 40. And it's increased. And it's so fast. Okay, I see. Or oh, is this just used wrongly? It's used as the position. So it has nothing to do actually with the radius, I think. But why is this rotating? This is the interesting part because... I mean, why do we have this code here, actually? Okay, so this is actually not doing anything. The radius is increased, but yeah. And this part is... I mean, it's just increasing the pedal strong. Okay, then we'll just ask about this. I think the following code is kind of broken, as the pedals are all drawn at the same time and are rotating around the center. What? The flower center you also had this here? No. Now it introduces this again. So it's shifting realities all the time. And why is it now using the canvas width and canvas height? What? Yeah, but still draw stem, draw center and draw petals. Okay, let's check it out. <laughs> it's completely broken now. Can you please use the code you generated before the last code and just fix the creation of the petals? Here is the previous code update with the fix for creating the petals. Yes, but I want I don't want the center thing that you did. I mean, but it still looks totally the same in the animate function. Now we also have a draw function. So the case before here. Yeah. Oh. It's always something new. The code will now draw the stem, and when the stem has reached its full height, it will start drawing the petals one by one, rotating around the center of the flower. Okay. Be awesome if it would work at some point. No way! Yes, 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 yes. Okay. I mean, if it's, if it's speed, okay, then it's like this. Okay. Stem grows speed. Please update the previous code to also include a pedal growth speed and don't create completely new code. Please reuse what you showed me exactly right before I wrote this prompt. <laughs> please, please. So he's update code that allows you to adjust the speed of the pedal grows. Growth is gone again. Wow, please, why is it always happening? I mean, I could combine that stuff. But I really want to have the perfect result just by telling it what to do. And it's kind of annoying that it's always rethinking everything, even if it already did like a good solution. I'm wondering how I can do this. If I'm saying like use the exact same code as before, but just at pedal grow speed. Why can't it just do it? It's not the same as before. Yeah, I mean, this, this looks very different here. You can just speed of course. Yeah, but why is the other speed now gone? It's very sad. No, nothing is working anymore. Because animate is never called. Oh! Nice. Okay. It's pretty nice. I mean, that's a plant. And it's growing. Okay. Where's now the uh, stem animation? Stem speed. Now we have stem speed. Okay, it's still there. Okay. Nice. So I can actually do this now. This is pretty awesome. Please update the code to also make the amount and the size of the petals configurable. Maybe I should tell it that, that what it did before is actually awesome. Maybe it will then remember the code and will not draw it completely new. Be nice to be nice AI. 
as I would tell another human. I mean, I would also tell another human, oh, you did a great job. It's awesome. And then the other human would be happy about it and would think, okay, yeah, what I'm telling to Tim makes sense and it's awesome. And I might tell this to others too, because I know what I'm doing. Otherwise, he wouldn't tell me that it's nice. And it's always different. Okay, I love your version. This version was pretty awesome. Let's see. Yeah, this is pretty broken. I will not even try to get this fixed. The last code was totally broken. Please use the code that you created before the last code because that one was perfect. I just want to have more configuration options like pedal amount and pedal size. I think like if I have this, then I'm actually satisfied. Oh no, now the stem's growth speed is not there anymore. But yeah, this will not keep me from maybe combining the different examples. Or I guess one last thing that I will try after this. Let's see how this looks like. So I will just do this. Yeah, and then we have this animation shit again. Okay, I will do this one as I really liked it. And I will tell it. Please update the following code to make the amount of pedals configurable and also the size of the pedals. But this should also work because it then uses the code it's because you can just pass in code so that ChatGPT understands or knows your code that you are providing, which I w was using in the past to yeah, create some comments, for example, or when I found some code and I, I didn't understand some parts of it, or maybe also my old code, which I just wasn't sure anymore what it was doing and then there were no comments. So I used ChatGPT to actually write some comments, which would be nice and help me a lot with stuff to understand it. Also, for example, when, when there are some uh, variables, which are just single letter variables, A, B, C, and you have no idea what it actually means, then ChatGPT tries to understand and get the names for the variables. It looks like the original parameters are there. Animate looks also the same draw stem is the same draw center is the same now we have to draw pedals okay then let's see so we have this i'm doing 10 here we have 10 pedal size okay so it worked it actually worked okay so this is how we make sure that our code that we like is updated update the same code to also animate the size of the petal while it's growing so that it's small first and gets bigger once it's in full size. Here's an updated version of the code that animates the size of the petal grow. Yeah, and now it's not using a code box anymore because I guess it's now very confused about stuff. Syntax highlighting, sorry, code box, um, very confusing. But no box with syntax highlighting. Okay, so we have to copy this ourselves. Yes, there's no nice box where you can just get it out. But I think it's the same, uh, hopefully. Yes, so let's see. Yeah, yeah, they're small first and then they're growing. So let's change the growth speed here. Yeah, pretty awesome. The draw center is still would need some adjustments to make sure that you can draw multiple instances of the plant in different positions. Awesome. Can you please update the code so that I can draw multiple plants at different positions and please draw three of them. Let's see what it's doing now. Hopefully to generate some kind of class, it's creating the plants array with some X, Y positions and some other parameters. Hopefully, and also different speeds. That's nice. And now it thinks it's YAML instead of JavaScript. Interesting. I'm wondering like where this is coming from. Now it's SCSS again. Okay. Okay, code is done. Let's see where we are. Yeah, so we have multiple plants at different positions, which is pretty neat. So just make sure that they are all kind of visible. 
So if I'm saying that y is actually not 2,800, we can have them at different positions. Please update the code to have a different stem height for each plant. Here's an updated version of the code that draws three plants at different positions with different stem heights. Defining all the different variables at the top instead of doing this nice plants array. No, stop generating. I really enjoyed this code version here. Makes more sense from the generative point of view. Then I can just generate this array here with different random values and generate the other code. I don't want to have something like this, which I mean, then have to transform into something that makes more sense and to generate more plants. Please update the following code to have a different stem height for each plant. Cool. It could actually generate everything. Usually when it's too many lines, it will not read this correctly. Okay, nice. So the stem heights are different now. But the center and the petals are not drawn correctly. This is awesome. The stem height is now different for each stem, but the circle plus petals are not drawn at the top of each stem. Yes, you're right. The center of the flower and the petals are not being drawn at the top of the each stem to fix this you need to update the y position of the center and petals based on the height of the stem you can do this by subtracting stem height from the y position when drawing the center petals okay so it's giving me draw center and draw petals functions which is nice so it's only showing me the stuff that is wrong hopefully okay so i guess i just get rid of those and Please update the following code so that the circle and petals are drawn on each stem at the top. Making changes to something that was done previously is kind of hard for ChatGPT. The circle and the petals are now drawn on each stem at the top once stem height reaches 100. No. This is not working as each stem has a different stem height. So for each plant where the stem height is below 200, the circle and petals will never be drawn. Here's the updated code which takes into consideration the stem height of each stem. Okay, and I'm wondering where is it actually setting the eyes? Why is it? different anyway i don't understand so is this just stopping at some point i mean it's, it's still doing uh stem high 200 yeah exactly in this version it's different yeah this version is the good version no no forget it please update the following code and take into consideration that the circle and the petals for each plant must be drawn when the stem is grown in full height which might not be 200 but something different for each plant we don't have an overall speed anymore it's just just drawing 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 oh no that is the speed now like the so if this is bigger yeah, yeah they, they will grow higher brokey brokey again Let's see where we are. Nice. Okay. We actually have something. We can grow them. Please update the following code so that I can configure the height of each plant myself without using the stem speed. So it's saying I can replace the stem speed with a stem height property in each plant object and then update the height of each plant using a separate variable. Yeah, but I mean, I still want to have the possibility to change the speed of the animation. So I will stop generating. I don't want to do this. I think this again. About using the stem speed. But I still want to use the stem speed to configure the speed of the stem drawing. So it leaves the stem speed as it was. And edit the stem height. If this is working, then, then I'm actually satisfied. So.
so if I'm saying stem height 500 here. Yeah, then it's still not working. I can control the stem height now, but the grow animation is gone. Please add it again into the following code. Okay, please let it be the final version. <laughs> I don't have to do anything anymore. Please, please. Yes, exactly. If plant stem height smaller than plant stem max height, then we're increasing this. Okay, okay. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Please. Finally. Awesome. We have some plants. We can control the speed. We can control the height. We can. Hopefully define also the battle radius here. It's nice. We have some generative plants. We could easily work on this now and make this configurable. The width of the stem. We can control the amount of petals. I mean, we had this at some point, so we can build this in again. Change the colors. The position on the field could be different so that we can have plants over and over. We could use like different styles for this. We saw busier curves for this, or we could just create a rectangle. Can you please? update the following code to have a configurable width of the stem here's the updated code with configurable width of the stem and with and height okay we just use that one okay now we need the stem width also it seems that it's working stem this is 20 and here stem okay so we have different sizes of stems and what i would love to have next is to have like a leaf on a stem can you please update the following code to add a leaf on the stem okay so it's adding a fill style dark green so I'm guessing this is our leaf now with a path which is created and I guess it's in the middle of the stem. The interesting part will again be that it's not drawn instantly but when the stem is growing. Note, you also need to add stem width and leaf width and leaf height properties to each plant object to control the width and height of the stem and the leaf. Yes, thank you very much. The stem width is already there. I added it already and leaf width and leaf height is new. Okay. Just play around with this for now. Add this everywhere. Use the updated draw stem function in our code. Okay, let's see what is happening now. There's nothing happening. Is this too small? Oh yeah, I see. There is a leaf, but it's at the top. For the sake of it, so you see it. We have something, but it's at the top of the stem. Okay. This looks nice, but can you please put the leaf at the center of the stem, pointing sideways? Okay, in this code, a new leaf size property is added to the plant object, representing the width of the leaf. A triangle is drawn using a path move to line two method, send it at the top of the stem. Yeah, no, no, I don't want it in the top of the stem. Can you please update the following code and put the leaf not at the top of the stem? but in the middle. Okay, I guess it's done. Let's see, it's the leaf size. We can update the draw stem function. It looks like it's not reducing the size of the stem. The code is wrong. It changes the height of the stem, but the stem should always be stem max height. Only the position of the leaf should be different. It got rid of the animation, so we will not do that because this is the part where it's actually growing. And if it's not there, then nothing is growing. Okay, nice. So, I mean, we have to leave it. It doesn't look like it's at the center or at the middle of the stem. It lo looks more like in the upper area, but it's fine. I also like to use a triangle as a leaf. It looks like tiny arms, but anyway. Awesome. Can you please update the following code so that I can change the position of the 
leaf myself via the plants configuration array. Position of the leaf on the stem. And you hopefully remember that we have the plants configuration array still in place. With this code, you can specify the position of the leaf on the stem by setting the leaf position property in the plant configuration object. Okay, this is new. The leaf position value should be between 0 and 1. Nice. Where 0 represents the bottom of the stem and 1 represents the top of the stem. The leaf y position calculated by multiplying plant stem max 8 and plant leaf position. So a leaf position value of 0 0.5 would position the leaf in the middle of the stem. Yeah, that makes sense. And it forgot the animation part again, even if I hold it so. So I guess it doesn't like the animation that much. And we have to set the leaf position ourselves. But I guess, yeah, doing it like this makes more sense now. I mean, we have working code, and why would we want to risk that? Okay, so I can actually change that, which is pretty nice. I can get rid of the leaf height as. We didn't use that anymore, and I can say okay. So every plant has now position, and like a leaf size could also be smaller here and bigger for somewhere else. Okay, nice. So we have plants, and I guess also would be very nice is some kind of background color, some kind of gradient where it's like some color at the ground and then in the back we have some sky awesome thank you can you please create a new function that can generate a linear gradient from the bottom to the top where at the bottom we have a ground and at the top we have the sky certainly here's a function that creates a linear gradient for the background of your canvas you can call this function in your main code before drawing your plans and pass it your canvas and context as arguments. This will create a gradient that starts with green at the bottom of the canvas representing the ground, transitions to light blue at the top of the canvas representing the sky. Okay, thank you very much. Just adding this over there, getting rid of those arguments. Main code before drawing your plans. Okay, so we'll do this outside of the loop after the clear rect. And now we have something like this, yeah. It looks nice. Awesome. Can you please update the following code so that at the bottom we have a brownish color for the ground, then some green for the grass, and then the sky. I mean, I know that I could just add like a gradient color stop and then I use different colors at like different positions because the gradient is drawn from the bottom to the top, which you can see from here. So it starts at X zero and at the canvas height and as the canvas height is 500 in our case right now, this is at the bottom. It will draw it from the bottom to the top. So the first color stop is at position zero and it's green. That's why we have green at the bottom and the top is one. So it will be like blue and we could just add this here. But yeah, nice. Also some comments here. Brownish. <laughs> Instead of ground, it's also fine. I tried to get the color stops and the linear gradient working, but the result was always not correct. So we will just skip this and jump to the result. So I just added it myself. This is what I wanted to express because like there's no other color stop here and uh, the next color stop is at the same value. I get like no transition, no smooth transition between us, so the, the colors are not mixed together. Maybe this is what I should write. The ground and the grass colors are still mixed, but I want to have a straight line between ground and grass. As these exercises actually to let ChatGPT do everything, and I have no idea what I'm doing. Now it draws rectangles, which is still not what I want. Just show you how this will look like. This is almost fine, but I want to only use a linear gradient so that the grass and the sky are actually mixed. Updated version, creating a linear gradient for sky and the grass and the ground is a wreck, which is also pretty nice. I will stick with this. I want to be able to configure the height of the round. 
update the following code to make the height of the ground configurable. We have the draw background function with a new parameter called ground height. Just give it a default value. I guess it thinks it's still percentage because it's doing one minus ground height. If I were doing five, it would be strange. I'm doing a 0 0.1. It should be like 10%. Okay, and let's use a different value here. Zero five, as I wanted to have this before. Yes, and now the ground is at a different position and the sky is still correct. This looks also pretty awesome. So now we also have a nice background for our plants so that they can grow on the ground. I think what would also be nice is to position the plants not using pixel values but also percentages so i will tell it that x x and y of plants because this will make it easier to position the plants relative to the canvas and not on specific position so that when the proportions of the canvas are changing the plants are not like tied to a specific position but they're spread accordingly to the size of the canvas update the following code to specify the x and y position of each plant using a value between 0 and 1 instead of pixel. I had to reduce the amount of code as ChatGPT stopped writing when the output was not done yet. This is why you will see only one plant and the plant's configuration array. We're updating x and y. To actually have it on the ground, it should be 1.0. So they are at the same position. Change the x value to have them on different positions. So the stem is correct. And now we draw the center part. Draw center. It's also correct. Oh yeah, and the grow animation of the stem is gone. Anyway, I just want to get the rest done. They are also taking into account the position. So the only problem is that the stem is not at the ground anymore. This is something that we need to fix. Nice. Can you please update the stem function so that the stem is actually growing from the bottom of the canvas when y equals 1? As right now, this is not working anymore. Here's an updated version of draw stem function that will correctly grow the stem from the bottom of the canvas when y equals 0. Nice, but now the grow animation of the stem is not there anymore. Can you please bring it back? In this code, plant's stem height is used to control the growth of the stem, so the stem will grow from the bottom of the canvas when y equals 1. The stem's height is increment by 1 in each frame of the animation, and the stem's width and position are determined based on the plant's parameters. The leaf is positioned relative to the top of the stem, and its shape is defined by leaf size and leaf position parameters of the plant. Let's take a look. Yeah, okay. Now we have this again. The leaf is at the top and not at the bottom. Thanks, but can you please update the following code to make the leaf relative to the bottom of the stem? As it was before. Okay, then let's see what you are doing now. Let's change the leaf position. Okay, I think it's the other way around now. It's relative to the top. And we have to grow animation. That's really okay. Is this actually working? 
yeah this is also working nicely so i can specify this yeah this is fine okay cool then i will leave it like this i don't want to stress it out even more so what i think still is broken is the position of the circle and the position of the petals those seem to be not at the top of the stem or center nice can you please update draw center and draw circle petals so that they are drawn at the exact top of the stem right now they are above it so we have the updated functions let's see those are together here is now correct and draw circle petals hopefully too okay it seems like this is the case because i had this before i want to have the possibility to change the amount of petals please update the following code so that amount of petals can be configured by using the plants configuration array yeah so i reached the limits but i mean we had this before can maybe find this petal amount did this here already i mean and i also know what i want so maybe i find it also in the plants I think this was the one that was actually fine. Yeah, okay, so let's check this one again. So I would say it's petal amount. Petal amount equals five. The petal amount. I'm also using the petal amount here. Oh, sorry. Just like this. And over there. Okay, I'll just try it like this see what's happening which should still be fine and i guess if i'm changing the amount it will not be fine yeah exactly so they will not spread correctly because of the code here and i think before it was like divided by little amount times two so let's see if oh yeah Okay, so this actually looks like it was working. And now we can say build amount 3, now do 8. Yeah, which is pretty neat. So we can have different flowers. We can not set the center size of the draw center. I think we had this before, the radius, the center radius. Exactly, just bring this back. Apply the center radius for the arc function, which is then using whatever we have defined, which is nothing yet. And the radius is 20. Now let's change the size. The first one 30. Nice. What should we do next? So, depending on the size of the center radius of the center circle it's like 15 then it's like a small thing in the middle but the petals should take into account the center radius but as we implemented it ourselves we need to take care that HGPT actually knows that so what we are going to do we will give it draw center and we will also give it draw circle petals i added enter radius to define how big the circle in the center is And now the petals should be drawn directly next to the center, as this has different sizes now. Yes, that's correct. The draw center function now takes into account the center radius property of the plant object, which can be adjusted to change the size of the center of the flower. And the draw circle petals function now places the petals directly next to the center, taking into account both the petal system properties of the plant of it. No, it's not. You need to update the draw circle petals 
as right now it will not use center radius but it should here is the updated draw circle pedals function that takes into account the center radius okay this is still fine center radius is now in here okay then let's see if the center is now very small it's just five I think it's getting smaller, like more near to it, but it's still way too far away. This already looks better. The pedals are not touching the center circle at all. Please fix that. After a few prompts without a usable result, I tried to fix this myself. Okay, so what would we do if we would actually want to have this changed? I mean, the position, wait a second, the position is X and Y, the first two ones. Then we have the radius, I think it's just the X and Y that we should care about, and those are not correct. I mean, plant X is correctly, then we have the width, yes, so we, we can have the percentage with positioning. Then we say we have the plant center radius, and we have the pedal radius. So just for the sake of it, if I would divide it by 2, then this would be actually more correct. Okay. In the code, shouldn't you divide plant center radius by 2 to get rid of the unneeded space between the pedals and the circle? Yeah, and I mean, at this point, yes, you would actually need to understand the code to get this sorted. Or you find, like, a better prompt to get your result. ChatGPT says, uh, yes, that would help remove the space between the pedals and the center circle. You can update the code like this. Okay, yeah, and I guess it's now the same. And now it... No, the pedal radius is fine. So I guess this is the size of the pedal itself. And you will just try to... So maybe, because now they are moving way too close to the center, maybe it should just be this one. This one. I don't know, and I also don't want to do a magic number thing is here right now. I mean, this is sometimes what is happening where you don't know what you're doing and you're playing around with the values. To see if you can come near. Good result. Yeah, I guess what I'm doing here makes no sense. At some point, this plant center radius is so small. So maybe doing it like this is wrong in general. Maybe it's something in this direction. Wouldn't it even make more sense to calculate the position of the petal relative to the size of the center circle like this? Maybe this is better. But let's see what ChatGPT is thinking about this. You could calculate the position of the petal relative to the size of the center circle like this, which would help eliminate some of the unneeded space between the petals and the center circle. I mean, if I get my desired outcome, that's fine. Okay, yeah, yeah, I see. But this is already, this was already also lost. I think we also had this at some point. Maybe this is why everything is broken. Yeah, I guess so. This is the size. So let's do this again. And maybe do this again, I guess. Here. And we divide this by two so it's getting a little bit closer to the center. Okay, which means that this parameter is the max pedal size. Petal max radius. 
is just like this. We're using this over here too. And so now we can also configure the size of the petals. Yeah, nice. We just for the smaller plant in the middle. Into the smaller. Now we have some more variations in it and got nice animation. Let's do it again. So I think we'll already draw everything and is not waiting until draw stem is actually done. And I guess this is something that I would love to still add here. Update the following code to return true if the stem reached stem max height and false otherwise. Because then I, I will use that return value to say that everything else from that plant should grow. Very simple. I thought it's doing it a little bit more elegant, but it doesn't matter. It's doing its job. Now, please use the return value of draw stem in the animate function to only draw the circle and the petals after the stem has reached its stem max height. Here is an updated version of the animate function that uses the return value of the draw stem function. Okay, then let's take a look what the differences are. I think it forgot to draw the background. And now it's doing another way of accessing this array. But actually I like this way more. So what I will just do is steal and we say Please draw the other stuff. So now we have our awesome stem growing. And when it's done, it grows a circle and then the petals. This looks pretty rad. Awesome. Really, really, really nice. The next goal is to use different colors for each plant. Usually everything I do is random, but here I want to use a color palette for the whole piece. I found a nice article about balanced color palettes and I hope ChatGPT can help me with this. I want to use different colors now, but I would love to have a function that generates balanced color palettes. Can you help me with that? I mean, the data is like until 2021, right? So I guess this article doesn't exist for ChatGPT yet. So maybe let's see what it can do without knowing that article. <laughs> this function takes one argument number of colors, which represents the number of colors you would like in the palette. The function returns an array of strings that represent the HSL color values. The U value changes for each color to create a balanced spread of colors. Feel free to adjust the saturation lightness values to fit your needs. I will just edit here and I will use this over there. The number of colors is now five, for example. So we have colors and this is, yeah. Can you please update the generate palette? function to also include a random value as a parameter that the colors that are returned are not the same every time. You can add a random seed value to the function to introduce some randomness to the generated color palette. Here's an updated version of the generate palette function. Okay, now it's a seed and it's a for loop without the possibility to specify how many colors I want. Please don't use math random as for fx hash where I want to use this math random will produce random values and I want to have like a pseudo random numbers and not actual random numbers. Uh, so this is not something that I want. I just want to see it. Please don't use math random and please generate a HSL color instead of RGB. 
The function generates five different HSL color values spaced 72 degrees apart on the U wheel. So why is it 72? The U value is based on the seed parameter so that you can get different palettes each time by passing in different seed values. The saturation and lightness values are fixed at 80 and 60% respectively, but you can modify these if you like. Okay, so update the code to also have a parameter for the amount of colors and seed should be a value between 0 and 1. It is not doing the 72 spaced anymore. Okay, let's see what this, this looks like. The first one is the seed. We're just doing math random here for the sake of testing it. And the other one is seed number of colors. Okay. Okay, so we have some values. I want that the color of the petals and the circle can be configured so that each plant has different colors. Draw petal and draw center functions to get correct results. But right now we have generate palette and we have the colors, but we cannot actually use them as the colors are fixed here with yellow and pink. You can pass the color as an additional parameter to the draw center and the draw circle petals functions and use it instead of the hard-coded color values. You can then initialize the color in the plant object and pass it to the function when calling them. Yes, but I, I mean, I don't want to have this as separate things. I will just stop generating here. Copy this again and I want that the color of the petals and the circle that can be configured via the plant object. Okay, making it more specific. Because having like the configuration for each plant at the center position is pretty awesome and pretty nice because then we can generate plants as we want when everything else is just executing our code, just using our configuration and this is what we want and we don't want to have like anything fixed that we want to change from the outside inside of the function from my point of view it's always easier to pass in an object as the parameter so that you can add parameters as you want when you don't have to add all the parameters here separated by a comma it's always very limiting in, in the sense of when you want to extend something a function and then you have to write parameter 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 now you can specify the color of the petals and the center of each plant by setting the petal color and center color properties of the plant object. If these properties are not set, the default colors pink and yellow will be used. Yes, because they are defining it like this, field style equals plant dot petal color or, and this is like the or operator pink and this is a way of setting default values here. Okay, copy the code. We don't need to worry if anything is breaking now because we have default values, so this is still fine. And here, what we can say is color one, color two, color three, color four, color five. Uh, so we are deconstructing an array of five values and we can save them into new variables. So the variables are called petal color and center color. So we just, just use this for the first one. The color is color two, center color is color one. Now we have a different color here. The same for over there. Color three and four. And also just moving this petal width. Is this actually used somewhere? Not even sure. And we say color five and then we say color six. So we have different colors for our petals and for the center of the flower, which is pretty nice and yeah, really awesome. Cool. And what was it? Petal width. Does this even exist still? No, you can get rid of. This was for the rectangles. I also had to draw a rectangle petals function at some point to have more variation, but decided to stick with the circle petals only. Nice. Yes. More clean code. Cool. The last thing that would be nicer is if you might have also some blending between the petals and maybe also a small sun over there. Awesome, thanks. Can you please add a sun in 
the top right position of the canvas, but make its position configurable and put that into a function as well. In this version of the code, the draw sun function takes x and y parameters, which represent the position of the sun and radius to specify the size of the sun. You can call this function with the desired values for each parameter to create the sun in the top right corner of the canvas. Okay, then let's do this. We're getting our sun. Bring this just over there and put this into the animate function. I ignore the rest because uh, you might see that it's already broken again and not what we want. I mean, it's not broken, but it's not doing this anymore. So we draw the background and on top of this, we draw the sun. Otherwise, it would not be visible. And this is x, y, and this is the radius. So this would be 50, maybe. We have like a nice sun. So we have the sun in the top right. Could also change that, make this yeah in different positions, and also use different colors for the sun. So this was the first thing. Then blending could be something. So then let's take a look at the raw circle petals function. Update the following code to blend the petals into each other. Is it blending or is it composition? Global composition operation. Is it like this? I think it's each other. I mean, I will write it like this because this was my initial thought. Maybe it's still doing something correct. Yeah, that's it. This should do something. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> it's setting the global composition operation to destination over, which is like this. So the content will be new shapes are drawn behind the existing canvas content. So that means the destination is what was already drawn on the screen. And as we draw a new petal, it will be drawn behind the other one. And I think this will have source over the default. Let's see. I mean, it's just adding this one line, right? And this other line, but everything else looks exactly the same. So we, this is what I'm usually doing. I'm, I'm just trying out the different things i'm never sure what kind of visual effects this will have it already looks nice but it's too light xr is also sometimes a nice thing to do yeah it's super nice in this regard here maybe you should do this in the center the center is not drawn first wait a second set this correctly afterwards Maybe if the center is drawn. No. I mean, it makes more sense like this anyway, looking at the result here. Looks way more nice. So sometimes changing the position of a function is nice because, like, I mean, everything that is executed before and everything that executes afterwards will be drawn on top, right? And the circle was before and then the petals are drawn. But now we change this. Okay, so, but. Moving the global composition operation into draw center makes no sense. So we just move this back here. This looks pretty nice. But makes all of the other plants too light. Don't have any overlap. So multiply looks also pretty nice. And is there anything else that we can do? Maybe screen. Let's see what this is doing there. Just super white. Let's try overlay. Also nice. So maybe this should be X or when there are many petals and smaller it's, it should be screen maybe. No, not screen. What was the other one? Multiply. It's just making some comments here. Color burn maybe. Let's take a look. Also a good thing. Color burn. Then I would say it should do this randomly. Depending on the amount of petals, global composite operation should be XOR for more than eight and multiply for everything below eight for the following code. Okay, this looks promising. Just have a simple if else at the top. 
save this here and then yeah let's make it more random can you please update the code so that when the petal amount is below 8 that sometimes it will use color burn and sometimes multiply was I mean like having a simple if else is fine to do, but it would be nice to have some randomness inside there too. So it's using math random here, which is totally fine well, for our case. I mean, I, I will convert this for if fx hash into something else. We have a seeded random value. We would just replace everything with, with the random number that's generated from the function that fx hash provides. But I mean, for this case, it's fine. And you could totally do it like this. So this is the base value, it's multiply, and if if our random value is of 0 0.5, then the operation is color burn. Copy it. Oh, it's JavaScript until the end. Awesome. Let's see if it's still fine. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Now it's flickering because we are drawing the pedals over and over and over. This will never stop. And of course, mass random will be reassigning this all the time. So we need to fix that random value here. So this would be random, and then we would create some random values. We're creating an array with two elements, and those are random values. And we are using this or drawing the center, which I think we have three plants, so we are creating three random values so we can just put this inside here now we put this into our object so we say random values and this is then the petal operation random values zero for the first element random values one random values two that means we can get rid of random here just say plant petal operation Now we have random values and they're not changing over time because they're generated at the beginning and not over and over and over again. Yeah, I mean, I could have also done this in ChatGPT, but this is some yeah, basic stuff that you always have to do in creating generative stuff with random things that you, well, at, at least what I'm doing, I define some arrays of random values at the top that, that are, for example, this random values could be generated based on the amount of plants that are inside here. So getting the length of the array and creating an array with this length and not doing this like statically, of course, you would actually generate all of this. So, so you can say, okay, I want 500 plants and this will be generated and all of those values then get random values so that everything is random here based on the pseudorandom number generator. But I mean, this is not part of what I wanted to do here. This is just like, okay, this is how we would use ChatGPT. So I think we are done. I have what I wanted, generative plants, and I could now easily add more, change the position whatsoever. I have a very good baseline now on something that I didn't do yet. So I did not create any plants in Canvas 2D that are actually growing. And this is pretty nice result for just using ChatGPT. It's done! We made it! And I must admit, I totally enjoyed working together with ChatGPT. Let's get back to the questions from the beginning, shall we? How to use ChatGPT to get from a rough idea to a working prototype? As I'm very happy with the result, I think ChatGPT is totally capable of transforming a rough idea into a working piece of code. I can generate a field of flowers. When I refresh the page, they are growing from the ground. And all of the plans can be configured by a global configuration array. The process to get here was not always straightforward and it needed a few extra rounds. But in the end, we have a solid foundation that can be used to build on top of it. Can you actually use ChatGPT without any coding experience? If you care about the details like I do, then I think it's required to have at least a bit of coding experience. Because along the way, I had a few problems. For example, getting the distance between the center circle and the pedals right. Or when the animation was completely gone and I had to copy code from previous results to get it working again. Without my experience to identify these kind of problems, I would have been totally lost. 
because even when I tried to get help from ChatGPT, it was not always capable of providing it. And sometimes I was only able to refine the prompt due to my knowledge of the generated code. Maybe ChatGPT would have been able to resolve those issues at some point, but I didn't have the patience to wait for it, or I had the feeling that we were stuck in a loop. If you don't mind that the result might change after each prompt and you have some patience when something is not working so that ChatGPT is actually providing you with the help, then I think it's not required to have coding experience. But it doesn't hurt if you have at least some coding experience. Because if you actually want to build on top of the working prototype, then you need to understand how the code is working. Or at least parts of it. Will ChatGPT replace humankind? Or is it just a nice assistant, especially for generative artists? I hope that we will work together and that we can make the life of everyone easier. Working with an assistant who knows a lot is super helpful, especially for generative art, because if I want to learn something new, I try to find a framework or a technique or a tutorial that teaches me how a specific concept works so that I can use that for my art. And then I need to understand the information that I found. And sometimes this works out, but sometimes it doesn't and I don't understand it and I don't find any other stuff that can explain this to me. With ChatGPT, this becomes way easier because if the material that you're looking at is already inside of ChatGPT, then you can ask ChatGPT to explain this in a different way and maybe this makes them click for you. And like when I'm actually in the process of doing the generative art thing and I'm stuck with something, I could also find this in the internet. But when you talk with the AI and you know like, okay, you get these results and if you don't understand the result, you can actually ask them to write more comments or to change the function, which is pretty nice. And you can do this at any day, at any time, without the need that someone else is actually awake when you are working on your stuff. So for me, I love to actually do this at night. Then of course, I cannot ask anyone for help. I need to wait for the next day or whenever. But you have to be careful with the result, I think. And this also applies to humans. We cannot trust 100% what AI is telling us. We always have to think for ourselves. So regardless if we work with AI or with other humans, I think an important skill to have is to actually make your own decisions, to actually think about something. It could be that it's right, it could be that it's wrong, but you have to decide this. It's not the machine that will decide this or not other humans that will decide this. You have to think about stuff. So to sum it up, we will not be replaced, but we should learn to work together. Which applies to everything, not just AI and humans, it's like everything. <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, you saw that I really liked the result. So what about the FX hash generative token that I had talked about in the beginning for January 32nd? I would totally do this now. Two weeks later. Two weeks? It felt like two seconds. Never mind. I did a lot of fine tuning and tried to make sure that everything looks pretty. The colors are balanced. The spacing between the plants is right. The amount of plants is limited. Nothing is drawn outside the canvas. The scene is redrawn after a certain amount of time, so that you can leave it open and have an infinite animation. And you can refresh the artwork to have a completely random scene with random parameters. Let's take a look. I have this running locally, which is FX Lens. It's a project from FX Hash, which can be used during local development of your artwork. And what you will have here is your artwork on the right and on the left, you have some parameters. So starting with the seed, the seed is the hash that gets piped into your artwork. And if I refresh this, you will see that nothing is happening. You see the hash is changing, but not the artwork itself. And this is why we have to enable auto apply on settings update first. We do this, we refresh the hash, and then you see that our artwork is different with each click. What we can also do is just refresh the page. This will also give us a random hash and some random parameters. So what FX Lens is also providing if you have parameters, which is called FX Params, a feature that FX Hash introduced recently, where you can give the minters, so the people that are actually buying the artwork, the possibility to change the outcome of the artwork, or like that they have an influence on the outcome of the minted piece. And it works like this, that you buy a ticket for collecting this artwork. And when you have the ticket, you can change the parameters yourself, and then you can actually mint that, but combined with a random hash. So you can have an influence on some of the parameters but the minted piece is still random so you can only change parts of it and this is what i did here too so the first thing we can do is having the time of day 
which is either sunny noon, which you can see right now, or the rainbow midnight. And I enable the auto apply settings again, hit refresh so you can see that. And now I change this to rainbow midnight. And it's a sunny noon again, and then it's the same hash, the same amount of plants, and just with a different time of day. So if we like this, but we want to have like a different plants amount, so let's go to two. And you see like it still leaves the colors as they are. If we're unhappy with the lightness, we can also change that, for example, to 90, which makes the flowers very light as you see them here. So they are more in the sense of white than dark. And yeah, let's go back to 60 we had before. And you can also change the background saturation to make it more like grayish or like to make it more colorful like this. This is something that you can change then. And you cannot do this on my website yet because FX Lens has no license right now. And this means I cannot actually put this onto my website because as the license is not there, I'm actually not allowed to do that. If you actually want to play around with this interface, you have to go on FX Hash on the artwork that I created. And there you can also change the parameters or you clone my repository on your computer and then you can also play with these parameters yourself. I also introduced some features here, which is the time of day, sunny noon right now, the amounts of plants, and also the special plants amount. Right now there are zero. And special plants amount means there are some plants that are special because they have more petals, or during the night every plant is special because they look different during the night, which is uh, the rainbow midnight. So if we change this to rainbow midnight, you will see that we have like two special plants, and this means that the stem is darker here, and also the flower itself has like a different composition operation than regular plants and if you increase the amount here to eight you can also see that the plants look very different and if we switch back to sunny noon we only have now three special plants and not eight anymore because during the day only some plants are special which you can see here this one this one and this one they are more light more shiny the flower lightness feature is using a reference to My Little Pony because like when creating this piece here, my daughters were watching me and seeing, oh, make this taller or make this smaller and stuff like this. And they also tried to draw flowers then, which is super nice. And this is why I thought, okay, it would be nice if we actually have like a connection between their world and mine. Yeah. So if we have like a dark flower, it's Nightmare Moon. And if it's like a very bright flower, it's Princess Celestia. And last but not least is the first redraw. As you saw, the artwork itself is redrawing after a random amount of time, which is like a range of 0 to 60 seconds. And after each redraw, this redraw amount is also randomized again. So it's infinitely different. And the first redraw is random based on the hash. And there you can have like different kind of values. And the values are reference to songs, shows and movies that I really, really enjoy. And you can only see that if you actually change the hash and then you can see some of the different redraws. And for example, Swifty means that it will draw very fast and there are other possibilities where the redraw happens later. So I try to use stuff that has a relation to time. So it's not random stuff that I like, but stuff that makes sense for me related to time when the first redraw should happen. And that's it for the artwork. The code is licensed under AGPL, which means you can use it for whatever, but if you do modifications, you also have to make them publicly available. If you want to see all the changes that I did, you can totally also just read the article that I wrote on my website, which is linked down below. The artwork itself is available on FX Hash, and you can find the link also down below. And if you are interested in all of the other things that I did, you can find them on my website. There you can also find ways to connect with me and the events and shows that I'm doing next. And one thing I would love to point into the direction of FX Hash, because they have labels to flag generative tokens. For example, if you use a technique to layer images on top of each other and generate something out of it, but the artwork itself is not completely generated by code, or if it's an animated artwork or an interactive artwork, so you can flag those. And I would love to have the same thing for AI stuff. So for example, an AI generated label, which would flag stuff that is completely generated by AI or an AI influence label, which you could use if parts of your artwork are actually created with AI or with the help of AI or something else. But I think it would be very nice that potential buyers know that this art is actually influenced or generated by AI. And for all the creators out there, I recommend you to talk about if you used AI in your process or for the code generation or for any part of your work so that people know that this happened. 
And I mean, you don't need to record a full video as I did here, but mentioning the AI that was used, for example, ChatGPT, and which parts of the artwork the AI influenced should be a bare minimum. Thank you very much for watching this and see you at some point in time. Bye. Have a beautiful time.